In different applications communicate online, they do so by sending a series of messages back and forth between servers. And many of those communications employ what's known as an API. But what exactly is an API? Well, let's get started. API stands for Application Programming Interface. In very simplified terms, it's how multiple applications can interact and share data with each other. For example, say that you're on Kayak.com ordering an airline flight from Philadelphia to Los Angeles. Well, Kayak is acting as a window into the different airline websites like US Airlines, Southwest, JetBlue, and more. So how does Kayak get all this information? Well, you guessed it, through an API. Kayak is sending the search query tickets from Philadelphia to Los Angeles to all these different companies in real time. They each give their response, which is collected and then shown on the screen. To understand the power of APIs, let's visualize a typical travel website. So maybe this image is pulled from Flickr.com's API. This location is from Google Maps. This five-star restaurant is pulled from Yelp's API. And these flight prices are pulled from JetBlue.com's API. Well, this is what makes the World Wide Web so powerful. There's a request for all types of data that another company has, and then that data is retrieved, and then there's a response on the screen. So how is this information made available? Well, the way that this works is a company like JetBlue is constantly adding and updating flights and prices to their database. Then JetBlue creates an endpoint, which is essentially just a specific URL or address for other companies like Kayak to access that information. So what are some examples of APIs? Well, they have APIs for song lyrics, news, weather, sports, and almost any data that you can think of. If you've ever seen a Facebook comment section on a website, even that uses an API. One way to easily spot an API in use is to see if any section of the website is using another website's data. But APIs aren't just limited to data. Some APIs, like Linode's, allow you to create and use services. Linode's API gives you an endpoint to access every part of the Linode platform. You can deploy Kubernetes clusters, attach block and object storage volumes, configure node balancers, manage users, and so much more. So how would you get started with using an API? Well, you don't need to be a developer to use one. You can see that this YouTube video embed, that they have a copy and paste code that allows you to put the parts of their website onto your website. And near the end of this video, we'll see what the code actually looks like. While the YouTube embed solution takes care of all the APIs heavy lifting for you, many companies have a developer program where you can get access to heavier API controls. So why use an API? Because although you can build everything yourself, is it really worth it? You can spend 20 years creating your own street map of the world, but it would be easier, more affordable, and faster to just use the API for Google Maps to get the job done. Which takes me to the next section. Some companies charge for API access. There are APIs that are entirely free. Some are only free for students and teachers, and others cost money per request. In fact, sometimes the API data is a company's entire business model. So you could build all these separate services yourself and then begin charging others to access your proprietary data. But in many cases, that may not be necessary. Are APIs secure? For security reasons, you don't gain access to the actual database. What happens is that you talk to the API endpoint, which acts sort of like a receptionist in a building that relays the message for you. You ask for the ticket prices from Philly to LA, and they give you a list of prices and flight times. So what does the code look like? Without diving too deep into the code, the most obvious API is when you click on an email newsletter. So let's do that. And then let's examine the URL string in the browser. You can see that this is the API endpoint, and this is the search query, and this is the unique identifier for the date range. And this is the security key. And so when this URL is sent with all those parameters, what comes back is a structured JSON text file. JSON is a file format that has the benefit of being relatively easy for both humans and machines to read. The browser quickly reads that JSON text file and then shows the desired information on the screen to you. So why use Linode for this? Well, Linode servers are fast, secure, and reliable. And all of our services are easily controlled through requests to our API. We even have a tool called the Linode CLI that makes it even easier to spin up servers, LKE clusters, manage your account, and more. 
and we'll cover the Linode CLI in more detail in a future episode. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss that. And if you want to create your own API, our wide range of server plans are perfect for development. So to recap, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Some examples of APIs in use include data pulled from weather services, search results on travel websites, and comments linked to social media sites. API is a protocol that requests the data, retrieves the data, and then responds with that data. You actually talk to the API endpoint, which is similar to a receptionist in a building who relays your request. This is for security, so that the company's database is never compromised or directly accessed by the outside world. Some APIs are free to access, whereas others cost money. Linode is perfect for building out your servers and APIs. And that's it. If this was helpful to you, then like this video. And remember to subscribe for more or feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.